Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a rather niche one, as I'll be looking at the various steps involved in the music technology component of the Leaving Cert Music course in Ireland. I'll be taking you through those steps via a PowerPoint presentation that I've prepared. The PowerPoint presentation is available to download via the Patreon link in the description. So without further delay, let's get into it. So here's an overview of what's involved. Step one, we set up a score and input a piece of music into the MuseCore software as directed by the examiner. As we continue through the PowerPoint, I'll make reference to any adjustments that are in place this year in 2022 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. In step two, you have to save your MuseCore file to your computer and close the piece. Step three involves retrieving the file you've saved. And then in step four, you're gonna make your edits as instructed by the examiner. The edits that I'll be going through today are changing dynamics, the key and tempo. This brings us to step five. After each of those edits are made, you'll play back the piece of music each time. The important thing to note here is that edits must be audible. That is, if the dynamics are changing, we need to make sure that that change is heard via the speaker system that's set up in the exam center. The next question is, what music do we input? So this is the piece of music that I use with my students. You may have a different one, but essentially each piece of music should have a few of the following components. There should be four tracks or parts that you can input. In this case, I've got a string quartet. So I've got a violin one, violin two, viola and cello. You input each part or each track one at a time. So you do all of the violin one first, and then you go on to the violin two. And you don't necessarily need to do all 16 bars of each part. This is entirely at the examiner's discretion. So what is MuseScore? MuseScore is a free music writing software. As of making this video, the latest version is MuseScore 3.6, but there is a big update to MuseScore 4 in the works, which should be out in about April of 2022. The analogy I like to use is MuseScore is to manuscript as Microsoft Word is to the written word. Here are some useful shortcuts in MuseScore. I won't go through all of them right now, but if you want to take a screenshot, do so, or this PowerPoint is available to download at the link below. I also have another video, which I'll link in the description, all about some helpful workflow tips for both students and teachers in MuseScore. Next thing we need to understand about MuseScore is the palette section. So the palette section appears on the left side of the screen when you're in MuseScore and it looks like the picture shown on screen now. To open it up and to close it down, you can press F9 or function on F9 on a Mac. And this is the most useful way of inputting a large range of features. For playback, I find the quickest way is to select the note from which you want the piece to playback and hit the space bar. You can also use the transport function at the top of the screen. Saving the file is exactly like you would in any other program. You go to the file tab, you click save as, and save it to a location where you'll know where to retrieve it from. So this is a small point, but when you're closing the file, try to close the file and not the entire program, just to save a bit of time in the exam center. And now we're on to the edits. I've embedded a video here, um, which I'll play now. Edit one is dynamics. Click the dynamics that are already on the score. Holding down control or command on a Mac, you can select multiple ones. Hit backspace. While holding down shift, select the top note and the bottom note. In the palettes, go to dynamics. It was mezzo piano before, so I'm gonna change it to forte. Double clicking forte will change the forte at the note where you selected it. Do the same thing again down here on the on bar five. Command and click or control and click if you're on a Windows computer. Backspace to get rid of it. Top one is selected. Cello is selected. While holding at shift I hit the bottom note. And change it to mezzo piano. You'll then have to play it back, select the note that you want to play it from, and hit the space bar. Mm -hmm. 
And edit two that I've done here is tempo. So changing the tempo. And again, the video is embedded here in the PowerPoint. So I'm just gonna let that play through. The second edit is tempo. I'm gonna delete the tempo that's here and insert it from scratch. To insert the tempo, select the first note of the violin one part. Go to tempo in the palettes and hit the drop down. The best way of doing it is inserting the BPM so that you have full control over how fast and slow the edit comes in. It will default to crotchet equals 80. If you double click this, you can type in the number that you want. Starting at 90 is a good point of reference. Now when it comes to changing it, it's very simple. Double click the tempo marking again. And I'm gonna change this to a slower tempo. So let's say 75. And edit three is how to transpose or change the key of the piece. The final edit is to transpose the entire score. Select the first bar, and while holding down shift, select the last bar of the cello part. This selects the whole thing. Alternatively, you can hold down command on a Mac or control on Windows and press A at the same time. So command A, and that will select the whole piece. Go up to the tools tab at the very top of the page, click transpose, so I'm going to transpose it a whole step up to B major. Select up, hit the drop down for the keys, go to B major, and when you're ready, hit OK. And one thing I just want to add on top of the video you've just watched is that there actually is no requirement for you to select everything before hitting the transpose button. You just need to make sure that nothing is selected. So for instance, you can actually see that the first note here of the piece is selected. If that happens and you go to try and transpose it, it won't allow you to transpose the way I've shown in this video. So you either select all or make sure that nothing is selected before going to tools and transpose. So that's it for the traditional way of doing the music technology exam. But I'm just gonna briefly talk through what the adjustments for the 2022 exam mean. So in the 2022 exam, you will only have to input a score of two parts and the score will be set up in advance. So you don't have to actually go through the bother of setting it up. This score will be already ready to go for you before you go into the exam center. So as it says here, candidates who had intended to input four part score for this activity may continue to use that score, but they will now only be required to input two parts. The melody must be present, so that's an important thing to note. Make sure that you've figured out which line has the melody. Note also, you only have to make two edits as opposed to the three that I've gone through. And then you just have to save and close the file. You do not have to retrieve it. And then it's the unprepared test as normal. So that's it for today's video. For anybody doing the music technology practical exam, best of luck and I hope you found this helpful and useful in your preparation. So if you did find this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Until the next time, this has been David Kennedy.